I'm outside of the Deerfield Apartments on the 1500 block of Sylvan Lane, where I arrived for about 8.15 tonight. Police were able to confirm one person is dead around 8.45 earlier this evening. The identity of the victim is still unknown, but police can confirm the victim is an adult male and are currently working to find out more after several 911 phone calls were made. While on the scene here tonight, police also told me about an earlier shooting where two people were injured and hospitalized after suspects shot at their car. And there are about three suspects who were involved in that shooting. Two of them are currently in custody by the police. Police, however, could not say, excuse me, two of the people were in custody for questioning, but police could not say if that shooting was in relation to tonight's incident. Again, one person, an adult male, is dead and police are still currently working to find out more about the, this shooting at this time. The school board immensely approved all the pay increases up for discussion tonight and the changes will include more than $8.7 million in pay increases across the district. Teachers will see an almost 6% increase in their salaries and this is the first increase they've had since 2007. Custodians and cafeteria workers, the lowest paid workers in the district, will see an increase from $9.15 an hour to $10 per hour. School psychologists will walk out of negotiations with the biggest increases at 17%. That's an average of $6,200 of a salary increase. Fire trucks, ambulances, and troopers headed to the scene earlier this afternoon. Officials say Batsikhan was the only person in the car at the time of the accident, but a captain with the Southern Boone County Fire District told me that she had to be removed from the car because she could not move. I mean, look at how far that car was in those woods there. Officials say she had minor injuries and she was not wearing a seatbelt. The woman was taken to University Hospital around 2 o'clock this afternoon. The council also met to talk about proposed renovations to Douglas Park. The main improvements will include new shelters, new playground equipment, and a lighted skate park, something many students of Douglas High School vo voiced interest in. The budget for the project is expected to be $225,000, funded by a sales tax of one-eighth of a cent. That's already been approved by the voters. I spoke to the director of Parks and Rec for the City of Columbia, who says the improvements will be good for the public. Texting and driving, or even just looking at your phone while driving, is amongst the most popular or common uh, causes of distracted driving. The bills will be presented to the Missouri State Senate's Transportation, Infrastructure, and Public Safety Committee. Currently, it's legal for drivers 21 and older to text while driving. I talked to one driver who says it's not okay for this to continue regardless of a driver's age. Learning to ride a bike is a rite of passage for many children, but some people don't learn to ride until later in life. Cami Waits' Alex Dostler tells us about how one woman who is learning to ride in spite of a considerable obstacle. Oh, okay. So when I put my right foot up, that'll be the triangle. Gretchen Mounty is one of seven adults who have taken lessons through the City of Columbia's Bike Buddy program. The program's aimed at getting adults up on two wheels, but Mounty faces one other obstacle. She suffers from a rare hereditary condition which caused her to lose her sight when she was 23 years old. Mounty says she doesn't let her blindness get in the way of living a full life. I want to be able to participate in this world and have fun and have something else to do. I've been through a lot now. Um, since then, I've, I mean, experienced a lot in life and just it's like, yeah, I could do that. I've done all these different things and why not? And what's the worst that could happen? Mountie says she also hopes to combat stereotypes she and other blind people face. I mean, I'm guessing people would be surprised a blind person could ride a bike. <laughs> um, we can do everything that someone who can see can do. Uh, we just do it a little bit differently. Her teachers say they've taught Mountie no differently from other students. Well, she's, she's picking up bicycling a lot faster, actually, than, uh, than other students. I don't think she's any different than the students I've had. The only difference? Silsby's approach to his teaching. I couldn't demonstrate by having her view me or view obstacles. I had to think up obstacles that she could see by manipulating, by holding. Mountie also likes the idea of getting around more quickly. It feels so great. Um, and you can go so much farther, uh, faster than if you're just walking, because I walk everywhere. But um, riding a bike, I don't know, it's really awesome. Alex Dostler, 
KMU 8 News, Columbia. Silsby says their next step is to teach Gretchen's friends how to ride with her. Order today, which will keep employers from asking for criminal history until later in the hiring process. This means a concept known as ban the box is now statewide. KOMU 8's Alex Dostler is here to tell us about the executive order and what it means for hiring new workers. Executive Order 1604 says it will lower the chances a felon commits another crime and improve public safety. I spoke with an executive at a job agency and a previously convicted felon who gave me their opinions. Ban the box laws are already in place for some Missouri cities, most notably Columbia and Kansas City. Both cities passed similar policies in 2014. Guy Hewlin is the vice president of Job Finders Employment Services, which helps people find employment in Columbia, Jefferson City, and Mexico. Hewlin says he was surprised by the announcement. Uh, here in Columbia, we're one of the only cities uh, in the state to pass ban the box, and we really were not aware that this was on, you know, on the agenda to be passed. However, we do understand that the hope is that. Uh, those that have been incarcerated will have additional opportunities for employment. But he's optimistic it would help potential employees like Jeremy Smith, who was recently laid off from carpentry work and is a previously convicted felon. I think uh, not having them know that kind of information right out in the beginning is probably beneficial to someone like me that is trying to do the right thing and find full-time work. Smith understands why some people might be hesitant to hire him, but he says he is making efforts to turn his life around. Specifically in my kind of case, I think it's a good thing, but uh, I can also see I would be uh, not beneficial to employers. So, While Hewlin says the order will be a positive thing for Missourians, there are still some unanswered questions. If, if we're dealing with the state of Missouri and we have some state of Missouri contracts, it's really not known yet whether or not a subcontractor to the state is going to have to comply with this or whether or not this is going to stay at the state level only like a direct hire through the state of Missouri but I imagine this will be applied uh, across the subcontractors which is what job finders would be doing for the state of Missouri. In Columbia a similar ordinance applies to all employers within city limits and enforcement is handled by the Human Rights Commission However, for the entire state, this remains to be seen. No one KOMU8 spoke to was against the order.